Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be explaining compression ratio and how it relates to thermal efficiency. Now we're kind of just going to continue on with the theme of increasing horsepower and of course if something is more efficient it can create more power than if it was less efficient. So if you haven't watched my video on compression ratios uh, I would recommend starting there um, basically the idea of what it is and so that's a good video to check out first. I'll have a link in the description. Um, but anyways compression ratio and thermal efficiency. So efficiency can be defined as output divided by input. So you put in X amount of work, but how much work actually do you get out of what you're doing? So uh, now thermal efficiency, basically you can represent this as 1 minus the heat transfer out divided by the heat transfer in. Now let's just kind of go over this. So you're going to put in an amount of heat into your engine. So that's what the uh, power stroke is. The, the explosion or combustion of the uh, air and fuel mixture and so however much of that heat you can turn into mechanical work is how thermally efficient this is but you're going to lose heat so whatever heat you lose divided how, by how much you put in uh, that's going to be the percent lost so one minus the percent lost and that will give you a percentage of your thermal efficiency so let's kind of go over the, the strokes and talk about what hap what's happening so here we've got our compression stroke, um, the piston goes up, it ignites the air-fuel mixture with a spark, and then the piston comes down. So this is, with these uh, four phases here, we can kind of describe what's going on with this equation. So thermal efficiency 1 minus heat transfer out divided by heat transfer in. Now heat transfer out and heat transfer in can be represented by a difference in temperatures. So the temperature of the air uh, in this uh, compression stroke and the temperature of the air in this uh, power stroke. So the power stroke temperature uh, after the power stroke is complete, once the, the piston is all the way down, uh, minus the temperature of the uh, compression stroke, the, the air-fuel mixture, before the piston moves up, that's going to be this top part of the equation, the heat transfer out. Now the way that kind of makes sense is, well what happens here is you've got your combustion. So T3 minus T2 is before combustion and after combustion. So T3 after combustion, T2 before combustion. Now this is kind of a idealized theoretical uh, equation here where we've got uh, combustion and it goes from uh, no combustion here to complete combustion here where you've got your, your peak temperatures reached instantaneously. So that temperature minus uh, the temperature before that occurs is the bottom part of this equation, the heat transfer in. So the amount of heat that you put in, that's right there, uh, how much of that causes pressure on this cylinder to push, to, or on this piston, and pushes down on the piston and turns that into useful work. So, theoretically, if it was 100% efficient and these two temperatures were the same, then what would happen is, once you have combustion, all of that heat, literally every bit of it, goes into forcing this piston down and T4 is the same temperature as it was before this uh, compression and uh, power stroke occurred. So that kind of gives you the sense of, of what, what we're talking about as far as thermal efficiency. Now obviously the air in this cylinder is going to be hotter than before the compression occurred. We all know that, I mean it's just kind of a common sense thing, but that's that heat that's being lost. So your heat is going out in this phase, and that's what this top of the equation is. Now, this can be further simplified because you're thinking, okay, this is we're, we're trying to relate compression ratio and thermal efficiency. So how do I get to compression ratio? Well, that's from here to here. Now, I'm not going to explain how you get from here to here because that requires a pretty good understanding of thermodynamics. I will, however, include a link that does the derivation of this equation. But basically, uh, there's a lot of thermodynamics you have to understand in order to get from here to here, and it would be a whole other series of videos just to explain getting from here to here. But the point is, thermal efficiency can be uh, further simplified down to 1 minus 1 divided by the compression ratio raised to the power of K minus 1. Now, K is a ratio of specific heats, uh, and it's a property of the air. So air at uh, room temperature is about 1.4, uh, that's the ratio of the specific heats, and uh, at temperatures, combustion temperatures, it can be around 1.35, an average of about 1.35. So we're going to use 1.35 for K. Um, you, you can see it used with 1.4, but anyway,
anyways, let's just go over some examples of using this equation. So my Integra can't win uh, every battle there is out there. It can win most of them, but here is an example of where it will lose. So my Integra has a compression ratio of 9.2 to 1. That's how it was designed. Uh, Mazda Skyactiv technology uh, that they've got going in their European engine has a compression ratio of 14 to 1. So theoretically, if you just plug in the numbers, 1 minus 1 over 9.2 to the 0.35, that gives you a theoretical thermal efficiency of 54%. Now this is ideal, so this is saying the highest thermal efficiency you could get out of this is basically 54%. Uh, the Sky Active, on the other hand, when you plug in 14, is 60%. So you can see that by having a higher compression ratio, you've increased your theoretical thermal efficiency by 6%. So theoretically, this engine is capable of creating 6% more power. So now your question might be, okay, well, why wouldn't I just have an engine with a compression ratio of, say, 40? Well, a couple of things. First of all, if you have a compression ratio of 40, you're going to have extremely high temperatures and pressures from that compression. So you're going to have to build your engine extremely strong. The other thing is, uh, you've, got, you've kind of got some diminishing returns. Uh, the curve of compression ratio versus efficiency kind of looks like this, where it tapers off and you don't really gain that much from it. Um, so that's another reason, uh, is, is you're not going to see that big of a gain. And finally, the third reason, uh, you don't want to have knock. So you don't want your engine to ignite your air-fuel mixture before it reaches the top. You don't want to pre-ignite that mixture. So there's a couple reasons why you're not just going to have some amazingly high number like 40. But if you can do it, uh, like Sky Active has done with uh, different technologies, um, the exhaust is designed in order to, to help it out as well as the uh, gasoline direct injection helps. So there's different methods in order to get higher uh, compression ratios, and that can help out with thermal efficiency, and you can ultimately have a more powerful, more efficient engine.